Good morning, y'all. Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. I'm Jess, and today we are doing the second full garden tour of the 2019 season. Uh, we're gardening here in Central Arkansas Zone 7B, and that means that we're pretty well into our growing season at this point. The garden, uh, parts of it have been in for several weeks, and um, I'm excited to show you guys what we got going on. So last week my tour was a little bit off. I actually shot it uh, a couple of days late because I had been sick and then the weather. And so today it's only been like five and a half days since the last video. Normally I do these weekly and I thought, I don't know if that's gonna work, has enough changed? So I came down here last night kind of worried about it walking around and I was like, wow, a lot has changed. So we really do have a lot to look at today. So you'll see here are roses um, on this arbor that we built. We have two rose bushes, they're the same kind. And I'm actually thinking lately that I'm gonna move these. Um, I think I'm gonna rearrange the coleus that I have in this front bed. A lot of it is not doing very well. I think I waited too long to put it in and it got a little root bound. I don't really know exactly what's going on with it. I actually am thinking about moving those roses up into that front bed and then planting something that's going to quickly climb on this arbor. I just was thinking about that last night, so I haven't made any decisions yet. Just a quick look here. You can see our elephant ears are coming up and the irises are settling in. Um, all of these little things are still pretty small, but these are zinnias on this side, so they're gonna they're gonna fill out really nicely. And we're gonna take a quick look in here. I've got seeds all over the place from planting and uh, neglected plants. There are dead plants that happens here, and peppers. Um, they're just I'm just waiting on them to get a little bit bigger. My kitty pool garden is thriving, as you can see here. And it's a, gonna be about time soon to start harvesting out these radishes. They're still just a tiny bit on the small side, but they'll probably be ready here within the next week. I'm also considering another change of plans for this space. Now, we're closing in on the end of May now. And um, for those of you who watch our vlogs and stuff, uh, we are clearing out the four acres that kind of wraps around our property. Uh, that we've actually been using and wraps around the garden here around the back uh, because we're actually getting some new animals that I'm really looking forward to and it was always going to be an undertaking but it's it's a it's a big one uh, clearing these trees out has taken Maya's attention non-stop as soon as that's done we're going into building fences and it may be the end of June before we turn our attention back to any gardening projects and with that being the case, I am kind of letting go of the idea of this cottage garden happening this spring. It was already kind of pushing it. And then the garden in the back, um, I'm hoping that we can get that space in. But I'm just, I don't want to add any pressure and push the situation uh, because, you know, we can only do what we can do. <laughs> so one thing I was thinking about doing is up here around the greenhouse, um, I do have a large tiller. I don't really like to use it very much. I'm really trying to move towards no dig methods, but there's been, uh, this isn't prepped at all. And so I'm considering the possibility of tilling this ground or, or here where there's mulch already down, maybe not tilling and just going ahead and planting. Gary, stop. Y'all, Gary is determined to become a star. I'm thinking I may sow some watermelons. All of that, that's what that was for. I think I may sow some watermelons in the space and some winter winter squash um, to use this space that's up here by the garden and just get it going uh, with something. And also I didn't put any watermelons or winter squash in the garden because I was planning on having the space in the back. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. All right, so let's take a look at this garden. Look at my radishes bolting. They're actually really beautiful. I think that's a really neat looking plant, so I'm glad I left those there to go to seed. I've been picking on this lettuce. It's starting to get really bitter. And I did throw a few tubers for flowers, dahlias, in the ground here. Here, my Tanya's pink potted beans are coming up. And uh, th these will be setting beans here very soon. You can tell they're really good sized plants. I mean, isn't that crazy how fast these grow? 
I feel like these peppers are starting to look a little bit better. I feel more hopeful about them. And the nasturtium are blooming. These are the Alaska Red Shades Nasturtium. The seeds are from Baker Creek. Um, and I spaced them out here and they look really beautiful. See, I liked, I like the way these peppers are looking. They look a little fuller and more hardy than some of the other ones that have failed have looked. And down here, these peppers are just doing very well. I actually had Benjamin helping me when we planted these, and so they don't have markers. I'll know what they are when they start to fruit because I know what all I started, but um, for now it's just a mystery. Whatever they are, they're looking good. Got okra down here coming up. This is gonna grow really fast and change a lot over the next couple weeks. Got lots of radishes to harvest. We'll be eating a lot of those this week. I've replanted this arch with a chrysanthemum melon. Uh, three times and I have this one puny little plant and that's it so I'll probably try once again to put uh, more seeds in the ground on this arch because I really want to grow that melon it said on the seed pack that the flavor was reminiscent of Greek yogurt and it just like I don't know I just had to have it I was like what is a melon that's reminiscent of Greek yogurt actually taste like so really trying to grow this um, the first seeds I sowed with my friend Amanda when she was here, she put them in the ground. And since then I've continued to re-sow it. I'm gonna try one more time. I don't even know for sure that I still have enough seeds left of it, but I'm gonna look and see. I think I do. Here on this side, I've got some bell peppers right there next to that trellis. Here is the mix of peas going down and beans, which I'd put in. Um, and look how high they are already getting almost all the way to the top of the trellis for the beans. And these beans are just beginning to open up their blossoms. The peas are sadly ending their run this week. There are a couple plants here on the end um, of these purple potted ones that they're still setting blossoms. And so I'll leave those, but most of them have reached the top of the trellis. They're no longer setting blossoms. And we're starting to have some of this go on uh, where they're falling over. They're starting to dry up. Peas don't like heat, and we are averaging out like 90 degrees every day. So I knew they would start to decline soon, and when they start to decline, it happens pretty quickly. Um, so I'm not seeing a lot of new blossoms, and I could maybe let them go another week or two before they absolutely just like keeled over and died. But uh, for me, I want to get my beans planted and get this trellis full again and just get started on what's next. So these will come out and then I think um, rattlesnake pole beans is what I'm going to put in right here. So untangling the peas from the beans that I've already got going here, that might be a little bit of a task because they have become good friends here. It'll be okay. That's on my to-do list this week. Here we've got Kajari melons, uh, some of which are really kind of starting to take off. I've had to replant these a few times as well. This beautiful Redmond Super Cactus Zinnia has just gotten really big and beautiful. I'm really looking forward to that. There are a couple other buds here that are getting ready to open. On the other side, I've got some Calendula and Zinnia as well. Oh, I haven't showed you guys this yet. Y'all check out my new garden flag. Kit and George stealing the show as usual. This was sent to me by a viewer named Rachel who designed it with Kit and George as her inspiration. And she uh, sent me one and customized it with the little R and R up in the corner, which was super sweet. Uh, she does have an Etsy shop and I'll, I'll link it down below. She does like mugs and stuff like that. I thought that was really precious and I really appreciate that. What a sweet gift, huh? Now I think these rows are probably what I'm most excited to share with you this week. My tomato alleys, they are looking really good. Like just the plants are looking really good. They're looking really healthy. And very excitingly, we have lots of baby tomatoes just all over. I actually felt like my plants were looking a little bigger this year. And I went back to a video that I had shared at the end of last May. Most of my plants weren't even reaching the trellis at that point. So I don't know what I did differently because I think I started everything at the same time. Might have gotten in the ground maybe a week earlier and maybe that made a difference, but everything's looking really good. 
Check out these Italian heirlooms. I've already said a few. I love the shape of these. It's really pretty. This is something that I think is really cool. Oh, look who decided to join the party. Did you hear us talking about your flag? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> hey, dude. It's glad to, good to have you around. So Kit and George sustained a little bit of an injury a couple of months ago. Not exactly sure what happened, but his leg got, got hurt when we realized that he was hurt. He was hanging out on the back porch, just kind of nursing it. And we thought, oh, let's get involved here. And so we set him up in a crate in the house for a couple of days. And he did not forgive us for over a month. Like when we finally let him out, he was, he was gone. And he wouldn't come around us. He was mad at us. Like he did not like being confined in the house at all. We had even tried at one point to like let him out in the house. We're like, okay, well, but he's grown up his entire life outside. He's a garden cat. He does not want to be in the house. And so uh, he has not been hanging out in the garden. He has not been super like lovey-dovey. He'll take his snuggles on the back porch. But other than that, he does not want to be messed with. And yesterday I came down to the garden and he was on top of one of the uh, arch trellises going after a bird. And I was like, he's back in the garden. Okay, back to what I was showing you. I think this is really neat. So these are a few black beauty plants, wild boar farms. They're gonna produce a really dark uh, black skin tomato everywhere the sun touches. And I think it's really fascinating how dark the stems are already because these plants just have so many anthocyanins in them. You can see they're super dark compared to like this green next to it. I think that's cool. Last year, I harvested my first cherry tomato around June 10th, and then the first larger tomato was probably a week or week and a half after that. So I'm really uh, looking forward to that, and I'm wondering, since my plants are a little bit bigger and doing, they seem to be doing a little better than they did last year, I'm wondering if I might not be a little earlier. We'll see. I'm sure you guys will be the first to hear about it. <laughs> so down here in this bed, uh, here's the broccoli rob which we've been going to battle with um, cabbage worms on these, doing lots of hand picking. We have sprayed some neem and now some BT. Well, there's a dead worm, so I guess those things must have worked. Here next to this is a borage plant. Those probably planted a little too close. And then behind here, I've got some beets running right down the middle next to these tomatoes. My logic in planting these so close to the tomatoes was I knew these beets would be harvested before the tomatoes got really big. And I did plant my beets really close together because I saw Charles Dowding does that and um, I wanna be just like him, so. <laughs> and as you can see here, I definitely have some um, roots forming. They're still a little, some of them are still a little on the small side, but they're, they're looking good. And I've actually been doing some research for some beet recipes to use these. Now, I like beets roasted, just like quartered and roasted because the sugar's caramelized and they are just really good. Um, and so roasted with something like cream fresh or um, kind of something creamy to complement them is a really a good way to eat beets. But I wanted to try some new things since I had all these different varieties. And I saw a photo on Instagram of a beet and goat cheese quiche. And it was actually in a tart pan, um, but it was a variety of beets and they were like thin sliced, laid out on, and it was really colorful, really beautiful. And um, I'm gonna give that a try. I think it would be a nice compliment with goat cheese. And we'll also use these greens as well. Beet greens are very good. Um, and because this is a mixture of beets, we have greens of all colors and beets of all colors. They've been really beautiful to watch grow. Look at these clowns following me around. Dudes, George and Gary, garden cats. The thousand head kale took a pretty, pretty hard beating from the cabbage worms, but um, I still have a lot of whole leaves and hopefully, like I said, hopefully what we've done for these is gonna work and we'll be able to continue harvesting off this kale. Here's my giant squash plants. 
someone asked these are two plants uh, planted next to each other whenever I plant squash I'll usually put three seeds together and then I thin thin it out to two and let two plants grow side by side and this is putting off quite a lot of squash they're not getting really huge and I'm not sure how big this variety is supposed to get so I'm kind of just keeping an eye on them at this point I actually saw squash bugs on here the other day several squash bugs and I handpicked all the eggs and picked the bugs that I could catch and sprayed neem and um, I do not see any squash bugs right now so that is good and on this side I've got another row of tomatoes these have not been tied up yet they've all been standing upright but I'll probably come down and tie these up here just in the next couple days before they start falling over lots of babies over here too this is my first year to grow tomatoes in these two beds I expanded how many tomatoes I was growing this year here are my competition plants my climbing triple crop and my red beef steak I still have to finish planting most of this bed on this side I've got a couple peppers here and they're starting to look like they're thriving some purple basil and a marigold all right let's go back over here uh, these pepper plants are doing okay. These are a chili chilaca. And then, of course, my eggplants were just all ravaged by flea beetles, as you can see. Uh, but the new foliage is coming in, and I still have hope that these are going to pull through. Here, my kale is looking lovely. Uh, we've been eating on that, and we're going to continue to do so. Uh, the lettuces that were here are no more. They've bolted. Um... So what was left of those, once things bolt, they get pretty bitter. So that went to the goats. And actually there are some dahlia bulbs in the ground right here. Um, lettuce can be kind of hard in the south because it's hot. And um, I'm actually going to try something this week to see if I can, can try to grow some more lettuce. Um, otherwise, we will probably just go ahead and move to microgreens in the house because... Uh, yeah, you know, lettuce is just hard outside during the heat. I've got some, a tomato and a ground cherry. These were the remnants of last year's garden. These came up themselves. And so I let them grow. I was excited to do that. I saw the start of some blooms here on the ground cherry. And then, oh look, there's a little, there's a little tiny fruit starting there. That will surely make Maya very happy. He loves ground cherries. My kids do too. They call them garden candy. And actually one of our sweet viewers sent us some plant starts because mine didn't do very well. I ended up with like two of my own of Aunt Molly's, but I didn't have any seeds for the pineapple, which is what we liked. And that's what we had last year. So she sent us some starts in the mail and I've got them right here. And they are actually taking off. We have several plants here. Last year, we never had enough ground cherries make it into the house to do anything with, but you can make jam with them and like treat them like any other fruit, bake with them. But they primarily got eaten in the garden. We'll take a brief look here since I'm kind of running out of good light. It's getting pretty bright. Look at the noodle beans making their way up and check this out. I just ran into that. I'm telling you guys, it happens all the time. Look, noodle bean blossom. That means we'll have baby noodle beans by the next tour. And they are indeed setting lots of blossoms all the way down. Here behind these, I have tomatillos, which I said that I wasn't gonna do tomatillos again. Um, I have now just failed miserably at it for two years. I don't know why I cannot grow those, but um, alas, I guess quitting is just not something that's easy for me to do. So tomatillas are in my garden again. Hopefully uh, they do okay. Here in the middle is a mix of zinnias. And I can't remember which colors are here. Actually, Natalie planted these and um, it was a few different packs, but they're about to start opening and I'll be able to tell you which ones they are once I see the flowers. Here, the blue butterfly peas are coming up. So that's pretty awesome right there. And behind that, um, in the bed, those are Thai soldier beans. So another long Asian bean. These sunflowers grow massively every day. 
And behind that, in my green stalk where I've got peppers and dwarf tomatoes, um, I noticed this. Some little tiny fruits on these tiny plants. And I just occasionally just twirl this little green stalk thing around to make sure that everybody's getting even lighting. I did that purely on a whim. Um, I was actually gonna put strawberries in that green stalk. I have flowers on the ones on the front of the greenhouse and they look amazing. They're doing really, really well. And I had this other one, um, which was in my other greenhouse over the winter with herbs in it. And I, w I had some strawberry plants I was gonna put in there, but then I decided I don't know, I just wanted to try something that was going to get a lot bigger. So I put the strawberries in a kiddie pool and all these extra peppers and dwarf tomatoes I had in the green stalk and I, I think I really like it. So right here on this row where we have the pavilion here, I've got a section that is not yet planted and I actually started putting some flowers in here. I'm really uh, deciding to put more cut flowers with some of the space that I have left because I want to be able to keep those on my table throughout the summer but I'm not for sure what else is going to go down here now the purple dove bush beans are looking amazing they're starting to set their beautiful purple flowers ah, the sunlight's behind you as you bring me I this. come from heaven <laughs> thank you my love to deliver the caffeine and cream <laughs> mm, coffee. nothing like Walking around the garden in the morning with some coffee. Isn't that the best? So good. All right, here on the end is another summer squash. This is a Costata Romanesco, is the variety. And um, starting to get a few little babies. This is like a zucchini type squash. That's cool to see. Let's talk really quick about the bed names. You guys have given me wonderful suggestions. I've gone through, I've started to compose a list um, and I am going to be wood burning onto some little pieces of scrap wood to put on the beds. A lot of them are beautiful memorial names um, in memory of gardeners and lost loved ones and I love that idea. I love the idea of giving a little space in my garden to help memorialize uh, the ones that impacted my viewers to garden. I just think that's really really amazing. I think that's just a precious thing. Some of the names have been really funny and I think it's going to end up being a mix. So we're going to have some that are in memory, but one person suggested a name for this bed. And I don't know that I'm going to burn it on a plat because I will probably plant something different here in this bed in the future. But this bed is absolutely 100% getting called this this year. And that is the burning banana bed. <laughs> I thought that was so funny <laughs> because here we've got the banana trees and also the Tabasco peppers, which last year were so crazy prolific and produced tons of peppers too hot for me to eat. Why am I growing them? Because I love people who love hot things. And so I give them the space in the garden. Um, but yeah, so my mom was out here this week helping me. Her friend Jerry actually grows these banana trees and I had passed them along from to her, she's grown them for a while and then he sent some to her to give to me. And I had the two and she actually brought a third out here and stuck it right here, one that was just looking a little better. But now you get to kind of see its leaves. Their leaves feel really neat. Someone commented and said, banana leaves are nature's tin foil. And I thought that was so cool, but you can absolutely use these um, to cook in. And that's probably what they'll get used for most in my garden. Plus they'll just be really lovely to look at. Isn't that a neat thing? So I'm Im imagining these peppers filling out, the banana trees growing tall, and here we will have the burning banana bed for the 2019 garden. Oh, sometimes I just look down the rows of my garden and it just brings me so much joy. Here is another squash. Um, this one's called Gelber um, Englisher, Englisher Custard Squash. They look a lot like a patty pan, but maybe a little thicker. And then I threw some zinnias in the corner here just because I had them started. Uh, so those will be pretty. Hopefully they won't be in too much competition here. Now I finally decided what was gonna go in these beds. So there's okra on this side. That will get big and pretty. One of these did not make it, but I've got some over on the other side of the garden where there are extras that came up. So I'll just move one of those over here to fill in the space. Those are the Benny Kadima watermelons and they're starting to climb. So that's really cool. 
I actually need y'all's help identifying what this is. Uh, this volunteered, and I thought it might be borage at first, but I don't think it is. I guess once the flowers open, that'll give me more of a clue of what it is. Um, it's got really prickly leaves, very textured, so help me out guys. Tell me what I've got here in my garden. I left it because it's pretty, but I don't know what it is. These are volunteer zinnias that came up from last year. I got a little sentimental on stuff volunteering because last year my mother-in-law was such a huge part in planting the garden and keeping the garden like we did the garden together. And so when things volunteered, it kind of felt like getting to keep some of what she had done. So when things volunteer, that's why there's random stuff. Like there's a random tomato and ground cherry back there and I'm just like, it's staying. It's a spot, it can have it. <laughs> so yeah, there's the random zinnias that were in the same place as last year. Um, I'm happy to see those there. These radishes will be eaten this week. There's, there's sunflowers coming up and uh, I need to get the radishes out so that they don't come into competition with the uh, cucumbers that are coming up right here. Check out this nasturtium. Look at those leaves. They're like as, almost as big as my hand. I actually didn't know nasturtium got this big because I've never had success in growing it. Uh, I've never, it's never done very well when I've direct sown it. But this year I started the seeds inside and moved it out and I'm so glad I did because everywhere that I have nasturtium, it's doing really, really well. And it puts off these incredible flowers. This is the peach melba variety. I showed you the Alaska red shades and the flowers taste a little bit different in different varieties. I didn't know that because I've never been able to eat very many. So I've never done very well. So um, the peach melba, I think that this flower is a little sweeter than the other one. Still has that tiny bit of kick like horseradish, but it, that one has a little bit more sweetness to it. Over here, these are white wonder cucumbers um, in my gardener seeds super pumped to see these guys grow and these are the kahu melon i think it's kahu do i have a marker on this well that's really helpful yeah that looks like it may have said kahu at one point i see an h this is the bed that i wanted to plant in memory of maya's mom um and it's right here in such a prominent place like when you're sitting here in the pavilion that is so framed by these arches and i wanted it to just be really pretty and dynamic i guess i'm being a little sentimental this morning so maya's first son passed away uh 14 years ago whenever jeremiah was pretty young he was 20 and um very long story short, but essentially it was a, it was a boy and he passed away the day after he was born, but uh, they thought he was going to be a girl and his name was going to be Lily. And so Lily's became like the memorial flower for um, Jeremiah's first son. And it, like Lily's, like he has like different Lily things, like Lily art and different things. Well, after his mom died last year, he said he was going to get a tattoo of a butterfly on a lily and um, those are just kind of just symbols that make him think of those two people and so in this bed we actually planted a bunch of different lilies my friend Xavia who is a precious viewer of my channel who's just been so supportive of us she actually sent a, a really tall tree lily um, and then my mother had given me these bulbs for these trumpet lilies and so this bed is gonna have these really tall lilies and then these others in front of it. And this is just gonna be a bed full of lilies. And this is just a, just kind of a spot of memory. I don't know about you, but for me, in growing my garden, not just for food production, but also for pleasure and for just the good that it does for my soul, um, I've learned to make room for stuff like that. Whereas before I would be like, oh, I gotta grow something that we can eat in there. I gotta give every bit of space to something that we can eat. And I have found that the more space I've been willing to invest in making this an extension of who I am, the more success I've had in growing food. So, something to chew on. Oh, look here. So we've been clearing the woods and this is as cleared as they're gonna be. We're not completely clearing them. We're just bringing enough sun in to grow some grass. But in doing that, 
Can y'all see our horses over there? Standing right by the fence. Isn't that a cool bonus? Uh, we opened this up for the new animals that we're getting here in a few weeks and we're about to start working on the fences and stuff. But now that it's open, we can actually see our horses in the field. That's really, really nice. It's nice to be able to see them. Okay, so on the other side here of the watermelons, the small watermelons, this is a lemon squash and it's getting its first blossoms starting. There's only one of those. Um, usually I do plant two squash plants together unless for some reason they seem like they're struggling and this got a really rough start he just was puny and i had a couple together thought maybe i needed to thin them out thin it out and it still was a small slow growing plant so i don't know maybe that's just part of that variety and here i actually put next to that i put some chard um i'm not sure how it's going to do in the heat but i went ahead and sowed it anyway i figured worst case scenario i can harvest it as baby greens um, but I knew that squash was going to get big, so I just stuck some charred seeds in the ground, like a rainbow mix. Um, these are a couple of Aunt Molly's ground cherries. Those are the, the two that I had started that actually did okay. And here are some peppers down here on the end. This is a purslane in this potted plant that's coming back from last year. Actually, uh, in my tour last week, I had said something about a weed and the weed that I had pointed at was actually purslane and several people commented and they were like, hey, that's edible, you can keep that. Um, purslane grows like crazy here. The only purslane that I actually allow to grow in garden space is the purslane that grows in that pot. Um, it's a really pretty mix and the flowers are pretty. Purslane is edible. It's slightly sour, like lemony um, and very like green tasting. And it is, it's very good for you. It's got a lot of nutrients, but it grows crazy here. It grows just all over the place. And it would literally fill my beds if I were to allow it to. For me, I don't, I don't, if it grows wild, like out in the, the poor soil on the clay and the rocks, I don't give it space in the bed. Cause I can just go forage for it if I want some of it. I can forage for it all the other places that it's growing. So that's why I call that a weed and pull it out of my garden beds because I save the good soil for stuff that doesn't grow like crazy outside of the garden. I really wanted these beds here to be amazing. Like I wanted this to be a space that I really liked. All of this really. Everything that's right around the pavilion I've really tried to make intentionally awesome and I'm liking how it's shaping up. I think it's going to be good. Now here's my cherry tomato row. I apologize that it's getting so bright. Um, I didn't get out here as early as I'd hoped. That's okra right on the other side of here. I stuck some flower seeds on the ground on the end. Uh, this is just a sucker. I pulled off a sucker off of a plant and just stuck it in the ground. I've got several inside that are rooting in a jar, but I wanted to see how that one did going directly in the ground. And it hasn't died, so that's a good thing. Here are the cherry tomatoes. Uh, right here on the end are the Brad's Atomic Grape variety, which I plant for... Our daughter Malia, she visits, she's here on uh, the holidays in summer. She'll be here in just a few weeks. I'm so excited to let her meet you guys again and check those out. I sent her a picture of this yesterday morning. I texted it to her and I was like, your tomatoes are almost ready for you. All of these are looking really well. Oh snap. There's a hornworm on this plant. Now that right there, friends, is distinctive hornworm damage. And then, when you see this, this is also usually somewhere around hornworm droppings. Hornworms are the bane of the tomato grower. They're nasty green caterpillars that can decimate a tomato plant in like a day. Um, I do not see the worm on this plant that did this, uh, which probably means a bird ate him. Um, that's what I would assume has happened here. Now, how they get on your plants is uh, like the moths that lay them will lay the eggs on the plants and then the worms hatch out and they live on that plant. And then when they get to a certain size is when they can just completely eat the plant. Have you ever seen, read the very hungry caterpillar? Yeah, it's like that. Um, they are very hungry indeed. So they're the same color as the plants. They're really hard to see. Best way to get rid of hornworms is to hand pick them. And the best way to hand pick them is with a black light at night. 
last year I tried it for the first time ordered a black light got it in and my friend Daniel and I it's whenever he still lived here uh, he lived next door with Maya's mom and we came out one night and picked hornworms by blacklight and we caught them really small and so I never had to suffer much hornworm damage it's time to start picking hornworms it is time I'll make sure to do a video sharing that experience with you guys I wish I could find the little dude that ate part of my plant some of these plants are massive I mean look at this thing it's it's very it's halfway up the cattle panel which is extended 24 inches up so that's like a four foot tall plant that's pretty cool huh lots of little babies I've seen the question pop up and I remember that this was a question I had when I first grew tomatoes and it's how long do you have to wait once you see fruit set on your plants? Because you see those little baby tomatoes and you think, yeah, I'm almost there. And you think, surely it's gonna be really soon. Actually, um, it takes a little while from when you first see those fruits come on. You still have like, okay, let's say you put the plants in the ground and it takes four weeks for you to see fruit come onto the plant. It's usually another four weeks before that fruit is ripe or so, something like that. I remember the first year that I grew tomatoes when I saw those baby fruits. I was like, yes, we're about to have tomatoes. And then every day I would come out waiting for them to look ripe. And I was just sorely disappointed how long it took. So prepare yourself. It's exciting to see those fruits. Just enjoy seeing them because it's gonna be a minute before you get to enjoy eating them. I actually love looking at all the tiny fruits and just noticing how different they all are. Like these are some uh, blue gold berries that are coming up and you can kind of see they're starting to get a little purplish blush on them. And down here, uh, my variegated plants, my painted lady uh, is starting to set her fruit. And look at these fruits, look how sweet they are with the little, with the little tip on the bottom of them. I just love how differently they're all shaped, even from this baby stage. And I always just remind myself when I'm sitting here like anxiously watching for uh, my fruit to ripen, like, just wait, Jess. In two months, you're gonna be so sick of, of picking six pounds of cherry tomatoes every three days, like, just wait. <laughs> like, it's so funny, you so anxiously await those first ones. And then a couple months later, it's like, okay, let's go pick more let's go put up more let's go do more just kind of try to keep that in perspective I'm also telling myself the same thing over uh, these 90 degree days I'm like okay chill out don't freak out don't be dramatic it's not even hot yet you're gonna have to deal with more than just this here's another squash bed this is the Ragosa uh, frulana which is a really neat it's kind of like a crookneck it looks kind of like a yellow crookneck squash except it's really warty and it's kind of whitish so i'm really pumped to try that here are uh, red slippery silk beans check out these blossoms aren't those pretty isn't it neat how different they all are we've got hot pink red pale pink purple and the teddy bear sunflowers this is my experiment bed, seeing if I can force beans and sunflowers to grow in the same bed. It was an accidental experiment. I just didn't know you weren't supposed to do that. Oh, dang. So look at this little guy. He kind of scared me, but I think I scared him too. I've actually already run into this snake several times right here in this area. So he just lives right here. Um, last year, I don't think it's the same snake. I think the one last year was bigger, but we had a little garden snake like that, which we named Uzziah. And uh, just every time we saw him, if he was on our way, we'd just move him out of the way. Little garden snakes are not bad. They actually handle with pests and they will keep like rodents and even varmints because like a rabbit, even though that snake couldn't really hurt a rabbit that's a little snake they'll stay away from them and so obviously um, snakes do freak me out a little bit I'm not gonna lie like he kind of scared me but then I saw what it was and so I'm gonna leave him alone he's fine we found a skin over here the other day so I he, this is just his area this is his home and I'm happy to share my garden with him see you little dude so garlic bed everything's doing okay uh, that's the elephant garlic right there, um, looking cool. And here, um, the lemon balm and peppermint is out of hand. I have every intention of shooting a video about how to use some of that stuff. 
Uh, maybe we'll get to that this week. Back there, look how cleared. Isn't that neat? These last three beds are not even fully planted yet, but they are planted some. I actually just put Malabar spinach on that arch. Um, I've got some okra here. These are Armenian white cucumbers here on this arch. This thyme is out of hand and I'm just letting it go because I really like it. If I started to feel like it was really becoming an issue, if it was like competing with this trellis too badly, if that plant doesn't do well, um, I'll just cut this back and dry it in the house and then it'll continue to grow. Here we have some melons coming up. These are uh, golden jennies and these are the chanterai. Here are the snake beans coming along nicely. And these are some flowers that I cannot remember what I put here. Um, they're about to start blooming. I sewed them really stinking close together. I have no idea what the thought process was here. I, I remember sewing them, but I don't know why I did it like that. <laughs> here is okra getting really large, Texas Hill Country and Bowling Red. And this is where I was saying I had some smaller okras. So I'm going to transplant these to the other places where I'm growing okra that there might be some gaps. And I'll just dig these up and put them over there and plant them like a plant starter. I've got that one. And then down here I've got a, another couple of small ones. But these are already starting to produce. Look there. There's a tiny little okri. So cute. So I've showed you that my eggplants had a lot of flea beetles on them. I've been spraying neem oil. Like right now, I don't see any flea beetles on this, so that's good. Um, my mom came in and, and pruned back a lot of the damage, and what's coming back now is looking really healthy, and the plants are looking really healthy. So she just took off the leaves that were really badly damaged um, to give this plant the ability to pour its energy into producing healthy new leaves instead of trying to keep those other ones alive. So my hope in having an eggplant harvest is being restored. I was kind of getting a little bit like, uh, we might not have eggplants again this year. I didn't have eggplants last year because the flea beetles were ferocious and I didn't get to them with neem soon enough and I didn't prune them back and they just died. Um, but I really like eggplant. So I really wanted like ratatouille in the future of my summer. And thanks to my mom, <laughs> I think it might happen. So thanks mom. I'll invite you over for ratatouille. <laughs> you see a lot of bug damage here. I sprayed this with neem as well and I don't see anything on it. I'm not sure even what did this, but this is my hot biscuits amaranth and look at that, isn't that beautiful? This will get really big and full and be a really dynamic plant right here at the end of this bed. This is where I still have the most to plant. I've got all the trellises planted at this point. These peppers are struggling really hard. That's golden oregano, isn't that beautiful? Bright, bright lemony oregano. This trellis is going to be for cucamelons. Uh, they are in the greenhouse getting bigger and stronger so that they don't get eaten down to nothing in their infantile stages like all the ones I had direct sown. Another amaranth here. This is Love Lies Bleeding, which is the more popular amaranth. Now, the leaves of amaranth are edible. Um, I am mostly growing it as a showpiece because it's so beautiful. Here's some variegated lemon thyme here. These are Israel melons. My friend Amanda gave me the seeds from those from her garden. And then I planted a Madu Raz melon here. One side didn't come up and then I've got these. Now this is two plants so I may be able to move one over. I may just need to sell more seeds. I've still got a lot of space in here to fill. The green beans all down that line are coming up nicely but I mean in between there's space. I really want to pack these beds out. These are cucumbers. Um, dar cucumbers is what's on this trellis both sides and earlier I said I had planted Malabar spinach on there I actually planted Malabar spinach right here I planted Yamato long cucumbers down there I just remembered that here are uh, Rampicante squash which these are a vining squash it's gonna grow up this trellis fill it out and produce nice long squashes so there's still a lot of space in here for me to fill. 
things that I still need to plant. I still need to plant potatoes. I'm gonna plant some potatoes. I'm gonna do them in bags. I've considered putting them over in the future cottage garden. If I plant watermelons over there and some squash over there, maybe doing a row of potatoes. I have seed potatoes though. And I would like to grow, I mean, as many of those as possible because that's gonna be a really uh, big part of our growing our own food. I keep saying I'll have the garden planted by next week. I am an optimist, so I'll hopefully have the garden planted by next week. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I do so love sharing my garden with you. I bless you. <laughs> Until next time.